All right, well, this first recording will be um, a tutorial working through the cost of capital uh, calculation or the weighted average cost of capital calculation for Marcus Corporation. Um, to calculate the cost of capital or the weighted average cost of capital, we need the weight of debt, the weight of equity, the cost of debt, or the after-tax cost of debt, and the cost of equity. In this tutorial, we'll be using the capital asset pricing model. and the discounted cash flow method to calculate the cost of equity. Uh, with the discounted cash flow method, we have to calculate both the dividend yield and the growth rate. And that growth rate is for dividends and also Mathematically, it works out that it's also the expected growth rate in capital gains. We're going to use two different growth rates. The first one is the, um, anal uh, the ROE multiplied by the retention rate. And the second one is the um, analyst estimates rate. And you can see we have that information right here. So these are uh, the information that's provided. The yield to maturity on Marcus Companies the Corporation's debt is 6.3%. Their market cap, which is the number of shares outstanding divided, multiplied by the price per share, is $399.35 million. Their equity beta is 1.42. Um, so this would also be their levered beta, what their the market risk of the company is with their current capital structure. The risk-free rate we're using is 4.6%. The market risk premium is 5.45%. The firm's dividend yield is 2.30%. Their dividend payout ratio, in other words, the uh, proportion of dividends, excuse me, the proportion of net income paid out as dividends is 46%. Their expected tax rate is 38%. And analysts um, expect growth in their dividends to be 8% per year for the next five years. So to start off with the weights, we um, take the market cap, which is 399.35, and then the interest-bearing debt in their financial statements, this is going to be Their interest-bearing debt will be their um, short and current portion, current portion of long-term debt, and their long-term debt. Uh, just to make everything equal, this is in millions, this is in thousands. So I'm going to actually change this to 399, 350 to put it into thousands, and then I'm going to set this equal to uh, the amount of my short and current portion of long-term debt plus my long-term debt. So I get total capital of 674,926. The weight of equity in the capital structure then is the market cap divided by the total capital for 59.17%. And the interest rate debt divided by total capital of 40.83% or if you like this better, it's 0.5917 and 0.4083. It's important that the two equal to one for 100% of our financing comes, our long-term financing comes from those two sources. The after-tax cost of debt is equal to the yield to maturity on the firm's uh, debt, and this is uh, for a 10-year bond for uh, Marcus Corporation, multiplied by one minus the tax rate of 0.38 gives us 3.91 percent. The capital asset pricing model says that the cost of equity for a firm is equal to the risk-free rate plus its equity beta 
multiplied by the market risk premium. So in this case, that's 12.34%. The discounted cash flow model says that the um, the cost of equity is equal to the, the dividend yield uh, for the firm plus the expected growth rate in capital gains or the expected growth rate in dividends. Like I said before, that they're mathematically the same or should be the same rate. So we'll start with the dividend yield. Well, we'll start with the first growth rate, which is the ROE times the retention rate. So the return on equity for the firm. We calculate that as net income divided by the amount of um, stockholders equity. So that's our ROE. Then we're going to multiply that by the retention rate, which is 1 minus the payout ratio. Payout ratio in this case is 46%. So taking that together, we get a growth rate of 4.19%. And our cost of equity then is equal to the growth rate plus the dividend yield, or 6.49%. Using the analyst estimates of 8%, our growth rate is 8% then. And our discounted cash flow would be 8% plus the dividend yield, or 10.3%. So we have three different um, cost of equity, 12.34%, 6.49%, and 10.3%. Uh, so I'll calculate the weighted average cost of capital for each one. For the uh, capital asset pricing model, we would take the required rate of return multiplied by the weight of equity plus the after-tax cost of debt multiplied by the weight of debt. And that gives us eight point nine percent. For the discounted cash flow for the ROE times the retention rate, we have the cost of equity is 6.49% multiplied by the weight of equity at 59.17% plus the after tax cost of debt at 3.91% multiplied by the weight of debt at 40.3%, and that gives us a cost or weighted average cost of capital of 5.43 percent and then finally using the amount for the analyst estimates for the growth rate we have a cost of equity of 10.3 percent multiplied by a weight of 59.1 percent plus the after-tax cost of debt of 3.91 percent multiplied by the weight of debt of 40.83 percent so we have three different um, three different weighted average cost of capital and there's a pretty wide range um, between the highest and the lowest um, and, and at this point you have to just kind of look at the numbers and ask what makes sense is it somewhere in between these numbers um, do any of these numbers make sense for the company and looking at at this I can tell you one of these numbers doesn't make sense and that's this um, 5.43%. If we look at the cost of equity of 6.49%, it's only 11 basis or 19 basis points higher than the yield to maturity on debt. So what we're saying, if we say that that 6.49% is correct, is that equity holders only require a 0.19% higher return than the debt holders of the company, which probably isn't very accurate. Um, typically, for the average risk company, the um, the cost of equity should be about three or four percent higher than the um, cost of the yield to maturity on the firm's debt because of the additional risk of being an equity holder. So we can say with pretty decent certainty that this is not the correct answer.
to 64.9%. And it comes down to uh, the 10.3% and 12.34%. Those are 2% different. Um, you might look at how those that, that change affects the value of the company. You could look at um, cost of capital for other similar companies to get an idea if that is a, is a reasonable amount. Um, but we know, we can say with pretty good certainty that this one is not a, a, a good amount. Probably because the ROE seems to be a little bit low 